today appearing on Annoying Neighbors with my friend Esteban. What's up? This is Roland right here at fucking Annoying Neighbors. What's up, my boy? It's good to see you again. Good to see you. I'm actually surprised that you came out to here to uh, Santa Cruz. Hey, this year during quarantine, I know we had to be home a lot, but I've been going out more than I have ever had in my life. I, yeah, I went especially with your new car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How was Vegas? Vegas was miserable. Yeah? It's hot, dude. Yeah. It was so fucking hot. It was like record-breaking hot when we were out there. It's, it's hotter than the fucking garage that we're in right now. It's not this hot. This is, uh, this it's is pretty cool. humid. It feels like... You're a big guy. Oh, shit. Yeah, I feel like I'm sweating like crazy, so, yeah. But, I mean, it's not that bad. It feels good. But that's good, though. I, I know. I know you guys went to Vegas. I heard about it. And I was also thinking, like, fuck, maybe I should make a trip, but I ended up working and shit. Yeah, that was good to work, dude. It's good to work. Right money's, after, money's hard right now, dude. I would, I would, any chance I'd get to work, I'd work right now. Yeah, dude. right after fucking 4th of July, I believe. Yeah. I want to say I started doing plumbing. And that's just time, Dude, huh? plumbing's sick, but... It's a lot of work, bro. Like, I mean, that's what that's comes. plumbing right there. With everything, yeah, it comes with everything, dude. It's not just dealing with shit. We had to deal with shit one time. Like, with, like it was something like that, like a, a septic tank. Yeah. And it was filled with shit. Oh. Dude, smell. I just seen toilet paper, fucking shit floating at the very top. We had to pour it out too. Oh. Horrible. I was just like, man, fuck this job. I kept thinking to myself, but then you saw the paycheck. Well, the paycheck's nice, but to be honest. What's driving me more with that job is to invest more on this podcast and also... Just to invest in general, get money and start investing. Just get money and do podcasting, do uh, video games. Get yourself comfortable enough to where you can do what you want to do. Well, that's the thing. With that, it's a trade so I can learn how to do it and move around. Yeah. So eventually the end game is moving either to like, I don't know, maybe a city like New York or fucking LA. Come to LA... And then, like, just get a house, do plumbing, and then keep doing the podcast and meet cool cats out here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of, like, I know a couple artists that are dope as fuck around here, and no one knows who they are. Yeah. So I've been thinking to myself, like, maybe I can, like, not, I want to say be that guy that exposes them. Yeah, yeah, It'd yeah. It'd just be cool to, like, do a cool little show and just expose get, connect, a Just connect with people. Connect yeah. with people and then, like, share your, your experiences with the people you're, you're like, connecting You're one with. of them. Yeah, you're exactly. You're a dope-ass artist. I mean, Thank the people you. that don't know you, you're from River Rats. Uh-huh. This dope ass band that's ska, but heavy metal, like rock. I don't even know what to like put you I don't in what genre. I don't, I don't either, and uh, but I'd rather not even try. What kind of music do you like? Like, what do you, where do you go? Like, uh, me, with I music? like all types of music, dude. I used to, I used to be like, um, I used to be, in high school, I used to be like that kid, like, oh, I'm all about rock and roll and that shit. That's it, fool. Like metal, everything else is whack. Top ten is whack. Mm. What's on the radio is whack. And then eventually, uh. At this point in my life, I'm like 30, so it's like a long ass time now. Like I've come to realize, like, dude, there's there's something badass in every style of music. If it, every, anything that's ever been recorded and put out, and it's 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 been it has enough listens to where like, hey, there's enough people that got interested in this. Mm-hmm. There must be something to it. Either yeah. either they are really good live, they do something live really good, or this their music in in the setting of a dance setting is really perfect for it this music is really good in the setting of like where it's fucking sad and gothic or something you know what i mean Every, everything has its, its moment and i just try to find that try to find that thing like what is it about that song that everybody likes is it the lyrics the melody the music the combination of certain things like what makes this what people always gravitate yeah because you know? everything has something everything has a, a, it's, its own sense of beauty that's cool to look at it like that. As an artist, not that many people see shit like that. Yeah, dude, I can't. You've I, you've always said that, and I've tripped out that you look at music like that, and that's what makes you a dope ass like lyricist. Is that uh, how you say it? Lyricist. Yeah, too. Lyricist. I was a, like, a fuck, person. did I say it wrong? I was like, <laughs> someone who writes lyrics. Yeah, yeah. lyricist, because your lyrics are fucking like. Every time I see or hear your lyrics, you always have this crazy message. You're a good writer. Yeah. Where would you say you get that from? Um, growing up, I became very into uh, music, and I've always I've always wanted to be a singer. And then when I would look up what would make a, a singer great, a lot of the times would be that he we wrote great lyrics. Mm-hmm. And then I got into like lyrics, like oh shit, these are good lyrics. When I would hear other music and compare like 
their lyrics to like what made their lyrics great to whatever is just out there and it's like whatever I would be like damn like reading his lyrics he said certain phrases in a way that it made me feel and think of something a certain way mm-hmm. through the words how they how they were put together and then with the music how you say it and it's just like I, I became very interesting that that became a, a, a big goal of mine to be able to do that and like like write things that I'm proud of to be like oh shit that was clever and when it came in right here that she was like you know she was tired yeah. like you know what I mean like like Wait, it just and before we continue get closer to the mic oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 and so um and so I'm super into like uh I became super into reading to help me like mm-hmm. think of different words like build a bigger vocabulary because like I'm from the ghetto so we never said a lot of shit like my lyrics before that would just be like, what's up, fool, fuck this shit, bitch, and when, I, you know? <laughs> what's your rap name? Uh, Rolling Blunts. Like, dude, I thought that was a joke, but you really went by Rolling, Rolling Blunts. Blunts. Yeah. Like, what? And then I heard your raps, and not, I'm not trying to talk shit, but your raps are nothing compared to your actual singing songs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. trip out, I'm like, this one when he raps, you just make... Because you, you just let it out. You know, yeah. you don't take it serious. Yeah. But when you sing, there's like I put more it, of myself into it. When I rap, it's just like whatever, dude. I'm just like, I'm just trying to make some words that rhyme, even if yeah. they don't make sense, even if they're not. A lot of the time, I fall into that thing where I'm like, I'm doing what I hear is done a lot, mm-hmm. and and it's it's not it's not uniquely myself. It's not uniquely me. Yeah. I don't have I don't have a rap voice yet to where I can like rap confidently. In my own style and say that my own words without like falling into these like traps of like oh this is what's hitting right now that's easy I found I found that rhythm I found whatever it is that niche and now I'm just trying to do it too like you know what I mean with when it comes to singing like regular there was river rats and stuff like that like there's nothing like that I'm like this is whatever comes out that's what I'm gonna do like mm-hmm. like and if it feels good and it sounds good I'm going with that like I don't care if it doesn't sound like anybody's or if it does sound like something you just do it I just do it mm-hmm. so it sounds more unique I guess yeah. you know yeah the rap is not something I never took seriously it's, yet but it's a trip I was just thinking right now as you're saying all that how weird is it that with singing it's little words but with rap it's like four times the amount of words oh yeah you you, you put in more words yeah. and shit so like it's crazy because some people would say I can sing, I can singing's sing, easy. Yeah, I can sing two two lines of words, and just extend the words and and phrases and stuff like and that. That's like ten seconds. And that's yeah, but with rapping, I have to constantly Dude. be filling. And sometimes it's, because I, it comes to practice into where you can start putting in interesting words, mm-hmm. better words that paint the picture better instead of like and I was and you know doing all those little like words that are just taking up space and what you could be saying really. Mm. That's when the craft I think is better, and that's something I'm still it's working hard. on. Yeah, I'm still working on that. I'm I'm good at doing shorter things, shorter little phrases, mm. you know. But I I want to work more into incorporating like, like where everything is kind of like a hit. Like oh, like every 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 line is has words that are like ooh fresh sounding, mm. and what I'm saying sounds fresh. Like what the what I'm trying to put out there. It's not like I'm hitting high again, you know. Like I'm yeah. smoking weed. And yeah, like, yeah. Something different, like I'm smoking weed and I'm fucking, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I was going to ask you right now, since you're drinking water, um, what would you say is one of your, I guess, best songs that you wrote? Like, is there some, there has to be a song or maybe a couple songs that you look at and like, damn, that's a good ass fucking song I made. And maybe sometimes, sometimes, isn't it weird that sometimes... When you write those songs, those are the songs that do not get played as much. Oh, the ones that you think are all the yeah, best. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I killed that shit, and there's no, like zero views. Well, views. right now, our, my biggest song is still "Shoes the Creeper," and uh, that one, I I feel like I keep making songs that are better than that already. I definitely agree with that. And as a bit, I'm I'm seriously one of the. And, fans. But I, but I keep going back. Like, what is it that makes this one still more popular? And it and. It's the format. And so when yeah, and so when you're telling me like the best song you wrote, is, I, I guess it has to be that one because it is. But what about for you personally? No, like, well, when I think about it, like it's that one because the lyrics. Because I think the before lyrics you are, continue, I don't want I'm, my yeah, bad for it, cutting you off. But like honeymoon junkie, that shit's fucking hard. 
I think that's better than She's the Creeper. It's just She's the Creeper has this hype with it. Well, no. Well, well yeah. Honeymoon Junkie is, is time. Fucking dope, bro. But, like, the structure is very, like, uh, the structure for for She's the Creeper is more digestible than the structure for mm-hmm. Honeymoon Junkie because it has that long intro. And then it changes that's up true. to it changes up to a style that people are like, what is this? Like, yeah. It's not real regular. So you have to get used to the style. And or even it, 40s. Yeah. Yeah, and so, but I mean, she's a creeper. I think it it has that thing where like uh, the lyrics mm-hmm. are simple and vague enough to mean a lot of things, and the lyrics, the the chorus is danceable. I think danceable. She's yeah. always fucking That's tight. Very true. You know what I mean? How it breaks down into ska at the end, and what I say, like the lyrics there too, I think are are really good, and and they can relate to a lot of things, not just what I was trying to go for. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, the structural in general too, how it's like it's like a groovy song and then it breaks it has that breakdown, dun dun dun. You know, like a dramatic breakdown. Mm. That that alone. Little things like that is what makes it like, oh that's that was a good song right yeah. now. Yeah. Cause you were able to add all this stuff and it wasn't too much and it wasn't too little, it was just the right amount. I think also the mixture of being bilingual in that song, you're yeah. talking Spanish and English. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. also creates something too. Uh-huh. Cause that style where you just go back and forth, it's like it's unique. Yeah, you know it hits it hits different. Yeah, and, and you know I, I heard um, someone's told me like it's smart that you guys make uh, Spanish music because worldwide, the most the 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 language most spoken is Spanish worldwide I didn't know that. through Spain through like Cuba you know through Mexico and all like all those people speak Spanish. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of countries that speak Spanish. That's wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, do you, I, I didn't so, know. do you see who listens to your guys' music around the world? Mm-hmm. Is there anybody in Spain or? There's Spain. We got in Chile. Yeah. Chile, we have a lot. Right. And I was like, what? Chile? You What's know? the biggest, like, out of the country that are, like, listening to River Rats right now? Mexico. Mexico? Yeah. Dude, tell me about Mexico. I, you told me stories, but it'd be cool to talk about it again about how lit Mexico was for you. Mm um, I like how you're just eating on the podcast. Doesn't you don't you don't care what people just hear you chewing? <laughs> He's been smoking. He got some munchies. No, um, Mexico was tight, dude. Uh, we went we went twice. Uh, now I can't even remember which one was the first and which one was the second. Mm. So I'll just. Say I things. seen you guys' blogs. Uh, yeah, 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 we got some out there. I remember. This. I remember We're gonna have those. more part of uh, YouTube videos put up soon. Eventually, we're gonna we've been working on them. I heard that it's really good to breathe out of your nose. Where'd you hear that from? As opposed to that out of your mouth on a Joe Rogan podcast. That's funny that you said that because I heard Bert Kreischer say some shit like that. That you have to breathe through your nose. So it's better. It's better yeah. to breathe through your nose. I breathe through my mouth all day. At yeah. night, I breathe through my nose, and that's why it's snoring. It's more beneficial for you to breathe through your nose than it is to your mouth, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for showing everybody <laughs> on the podcast how to breathe. But um, so best best Mexico experiences. Um, uh, there's a bunch of crazy shit that's happened. Uh, one of them was I remember we were in, Gu- no, not Guadalajara, Defe, and we were we had a driver. We had like a driver. We had a driver and like a guy who was like taking us around and showing us places like a guide. And uh, the driver started driving us, and and we were in this little van, and it was the band, the four of us in the band, plus the driver, plus the guy, and plus like three girls, and we're just driving down. We're we're heading back to where we were staying. We had just finished playing the show, and we're going back to where we're playing, to where we're staying, and uh, they pull us over. Like we get we get to a fucking checkpoint. Oh, cops! Yeah, and oh, immediately. Shit. Immediately they pulled us over, and I tripped out because the cop stopped us right, and he had asked the driver. He's all, he's all, sir, have you been drinking? And that fool straight up was like, yes, sir, I have. I have been drinking. Yeah, yeah, I've been drinking. I drank like six, seven beers, and I was totally like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because over here you'd be like, no, sir, I haven't been drinking. Yeah, like, you'll be no. drunk as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta say you had, because if you say you had one beer, then like, You're oh dying. yeah, all right, get the fuck out. Let me hear, let me see and shit. You know, mm. over there he was like, yeah, dude, I have like six, seven, eight beers, but I'm good. And like, you know, I was like, what the? He, fuck? The, the cop is like, same here. Same, same, right. same here, same here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then so. uh he told us, but but he smelled weed. He's like, oh, I smell fucking weed in here. 
pull over. So he's, he's like, don't sell that mota. No, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. So he, yeah, so he pulled us over. We all got out. Like I, I think I had, <laughs> I had weed on me. Yeah. But for some reason, they were only hassling Jed. Because Jed oh, had because he has his cause dreads because he, he has dreadlocks and he tattoos. Was, the tattoos all over him. Yeah, and this the, motherfucker has. A yeah, yeah, yeah. So they go up to him. That's and the they, and, they, yeah, yeah. and he's the one who doesn't smoke. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't. do anything. That's he doesn't, true. Yeah, at that time, at that time, yeah, he didn't yeah. do nothing. He was all he did was drinking and shit a lot. Yeah, but he smoked weed was in his thing, and so they go, they were just like hassling that phone, be like, hey. ¿Dónde está la mota? No más diles dónde está y los dejamos ir. ¿Dónde está la mota? Oh, and, and Jed doesn't really talk and, Spanish. And so t- get... Yeah. And so Jed's like, he's like, I don't have nothing. I really don't. <laughs> and then and they're like, ¿dónde está? And then like, I had to cut in like, no, neta, él no, él no tiene nada. Él no es aquí, él no fuma, no, no. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, shut. And then, and then the driver comes around. He's like, hey, fool, just, uh, oh, I just got you this other taxi. Just go home, fool. I'm going to handle this. Yeah. And I was like, all right. And then we went to the other taxi. And apparently that just paid him off. Damn. And then, yeah, for we left, and then that shit was funny as fuck. What about that yeah. one time? Um, the dogs were barking. What the story is that? The dogs were barking. Remember, like, they were going to let you go, but the dogs kept barking at you guys, and I, I don't know if it was weed or Oh, cold. that wasn't for Mexico, though. That, that was, that that was, was like like in Arizona. America. That was, that was Arizona, and, uh, and, uh, and um, coming from Texas. Mm. The border from Texas to New Mexico or New Mexico to Arizona, one of those. Like, there's they had to stop this and they. Yeah. That's that's not Mexico though. Yeah. Well, yeah. what happened right there? I think that's a cool story. Well, let me take it to piss real fast. Cause I gotta take a piss. You gotta do what? I gotta take a piss. I gotta take a piss. I gotta take, take a, a piss. piss. I gotta take a All piss. Right. All right. Quick break. All right. How do you think so far? The yeah, answer was feeling good. All right. Well, this is actually interesting. I'm actually thinking about doing this more often when I'm either done with the podcast or maybe at the very beginning. I still don't know. I'm still thinking about this part, but I know the podcast right now with Roland was cut off a little early. We ended up doing shrooms and we pretty much didn't get back to it. Yeah, he was supposed to take a piss. We're supposed to take a break, but shit happened. So this is kind of like the runoff, I guess. I just gotta go. I can't remember what we exactly what we talked about. I just know he visited. He's from an amazing band. Look them up, River Rats. Shout out to River Rats. I used to do photography for them. That's the band. I guess you could say I just did a whole practice run because my dumbass forgot to hit record. <sighs> of course. So th- this is what happens when you fucking run your own fucking shop podcast not fucking shop um okay it looks good i'm actually recording anyways i'm your host box aka esteban jr and um it was good doing this podcast with uh roland roland's from river rats i sound like i just did this whole speech it was like fucking 10 minutes long and uh yeah i gotta fucking redo this whole thing um I'm such an idiot. By the way, I do this all by myself. Like this whole setup is me. Like there's no one. There's no one here. I have to record on the H Zoom Six GoPro going. I got mics right here going. I have to edit. That's why it takes so long. Some people ask why. Well, how come you're not posting weekly? You say you're gonna post weekly. It's fucking hard. I also started doing this plumbing job. Brutal. Anyways, look at this is a setup. Boom, studio. I literally just set up, just got lights. It's amazing. It feels good. On the best way to put it, it feels fucking amazing to actually have this shit set up. Um, so, yeah, shout out to River Rats. I did a lot of photography photos, like videos and shit like that. It was crazy. There would be nights where, you know, me and Roland would take some fucking um, ecstasy and we'll show it to the fucking concert. And be just rolling hard. Like, I'm talking about on the way there, Roland would be, I'm driving, Roland's passenger, and he looks at me like, wow, bro, I feel good, man. He just kept doing that. And I kept looking like, holy shit, I hope I do not look like that. This guy looked like he was just gone. And yeah, I was, I was probably the reason why sometimes he was off on the fucking stage. Like, yeah, and then all the drugs, that's the whole... I was roommates with the drummer. Roland's a good friend of mine. It was good to have him on. 
I'm going to cut this one short because last one I did 10 minutes and I didn't fucking record. So originally I did a bunch of shout outs. So shout out to River Rats. Um, shout out to Never Scared Lifestyle Clothing. You know, that's a good friend of mine as well. They got some dope clothing. I'm seeing them everywhere. I see right here at the store now. It's pretty sick seeing them. So go check them out. Follow them on IG. Follow them. Um, I don't know if they got Twitters. But I know everybody I'm about to say they got Instagram. So follow them on Instagram. Close the Vibes is another one. I wore the shirt last podcast, I think, uh, with Piggy, I think. I can't believe can't remember uh coast the vibes pop scrubs also has bomb fried chicken and rib check them out instagram uh product of the struggle go follow them instagram another one of my friends that makes clothing pop scrubs was food legacy automotive if you haven't seen it i did a podcast with them it's like an interview and that was the last part yeah podcast number 13 neighborhood barbecue eight through one check them out delicious food try the sampler amazing Check out Legs Got Cakes if you're in the Inland Empire, Fontana. And she got just delicious treats. Check them out. Right now, what's on my mind? I forgot I got ribs cooking. So I'm going to go check if fucking they might be burnt. So as your host, once again, Box, a.k.a. Esteban, we're out. Can't feel me like the drugs that you be stuffing up your mouth. I miss the solo dello, you can call me young fuego I'm built to go, I'm built to last, I came to whip some ass They talk too much and play too much, time for me just the class I'm on a greater level, can't play with me like the vision I'm on a bigger mission with little description You missing determination, it's time for a new occupation Dodging incarceration, I love that you steady be hating a lot of you don't feel me, so just this. I've been going up like a jet. A lot of you don't feel me, so just this. I've been going up like a jet.